Hey there guys, welcome to another fusion bomb. I assure you it is a lot less deadly than it sounds. Um, we're going to be creating a nice particle text reveal effect today. Um, so first thing we're going to do is when we're in DaVinci Resolve we are going to create a new fusion composition. Set it to about 10 seconds long. And then we're just going to go straight into our fusion page. All we're going to have is a media out because we have no media in as of yet. So we're going to drag a text node onto, onto our node tree. I'm just going to put in fusion bomb for my text. So to create this effect, we're going to need three uh, different node trees that we're going to merge all together at the end. We're going to start off with our text revealing. Then we're going to have another one that's going to put a little glow on the edge that's going to make the effect more realistic. And then we're going to need a um, particle generation. We'll merge these all together at the end and that'll give you the effect that you saw at the beginning. So to do this, the simplest way is we just bring in three Mac control nodes. And I will rename these so we know what they do. And I'll call that first one text reveal that. This will be our glow mat and our particle mat. So we just need to drag our text into each of these. And let's have a look. We want our text to be a little bit bigger than that. That should do nicely. So for a text reveal, what we want is we need a, a mask that starts off as nothing and slowly reveals the text over time. Simplest way for me to do this is I'm going to use a polygon node. And I'm going to create a small polygon randomized shape in the middle so that it's not too linear and a bit more realistic. And then I'm going to drag that over my a text reveal mat, I'm going to use it as a garbage mat. And this means that anything that our mask goes over will be removed. So if we move to around about frame 130 where I want the text to be in full effect, I then select all of my, um, my polygon. If I press Shift and B, it'll put a box around it and I can drag it out to full size and cover my text in its entirety. Now if I was to go to the beginning and play this you will see that we've got the exact opposite of what we want as we want the text revealing not disappearing. So what we need to do is go into our polygon, mat, uh, polygon mask and invert it and then we'll see that the text reveals as the polygon goes over the text and that's Simply our text is now being revealed. That's all we need to do for that particular mat. So next we want to add a glow to the edge of, edge of our text as it's being revealed. Um, just to give it a bit more realistic feel. So to do this, we're going to um, copy this polygon node and we're going to paste an instance. What this means is that everything we ever change on this polygon will also change in this polygon. But this two things that we want to be separate. We don't want it to be a solid, so if we right click and de-instance, and we want it to have a border width. So de-instance that too, and then we can alter these without altering our original, and everything else will, will interchange between the two. So we don't want it to be solid, and we want a slight border width, and if we connect that to the garbage mat of our glow mat, we will see that we get this gives us a small area that is just the edge of where the text is going to be revealed and we can add a glow to this. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a glow, the second one in the list. And you can choose whichever color you want. I'm going to go for a nice blue color. Bring the spread down just to make it a little more condensed. And we'll bring the threshold down a little bit. You can play around with these to get the um, exactly where you want them to be. So that looks about right. <clears throat> and to give it more of a, a nice glow, if we add a soft glow to the end, you'll see we get this, which is uh, 
a little bit nicer. And then if we were to merge that on top of our text, uh, we'll put that in our second window and play it through. This is what we get. So already we're getting a nice effect without without our uh, particles as of yet. What we can do is make it just a little bit nicer. If we go into our polygon, add just a little bit of a soft edge, just just makes it look a bit smoother and a bit more pleasing to the eye. So that's our reveal and our edge glows. So now it's just a case of creating our particles. So we want the particles to appear in the exact same place as our glow. So the easiest way to do that is we can use the uh, polygon that we've already created and we can drag that into the garbage mat of our particle mat. So now we're going to need a particle emitter. So if we drag on a particle emitter, every particle emitter always needs a particle renderer to render out the particles. So if we bring our particle render in, we'll see that the default is 3D, but we don't want that. We've, we're just working 2D today. So we're going to change that to 2D. And our particle emitter at the moment has no input. We can't drag it in. So what we want is we want the particle emitter to only emit particles on this glow line. So the easiest way to do that is if we go to our particle emitter in the region tab, we can change it to bitmap. And that gives us an input. And that means that the particles will only be created where this mat actually is at the time on the timeline. So at the moment it's set to create uh, 10 particles every second, but that's not really going to give us what we want. So if we put our particle render into the second window and to play it, you can see we're not really getting much happening. So let's go into our particle emitter, change our number to about 500 and let's see what we get. should be getting something and yet we're getting nothing. Let's have a look what we've got here. Right, I can see the problem. I've got my um, text is in the effect mask and not in the input. So we need to drag that, change it to our background. And here we get what we we're looking for. So as you can see, the particles only generate where this mask is going over. So the next stage is we need to give these particles some animation so that they look realistic and then give them some color so that they they're not just white. So if we start with our color, as this is probably the simplest place to start, we will jump over to our color cab. Uh, change them from point to blob, as that means we can make them a bit bigger. If it's a point, it's, it's literally just a part, um, a pixel on the screen, and we want them a bit bigger than that. So we go down to our size controls, and we can enlarge them just a little bit. What I also did is I changed it so that they shrink over time as these are looking like sparks. We want them to um, get smaller as their lifespan comes to an end. And then while we're in the style tab, we can change our color to whatever color you like. I went for a nice spark, um, sparkling yellow. Uh, so if we play now, we start to see that we're getting the, the color that we want. So now we need the animation. <coughs> uh, the animation that I used was a particle turbulence. So what turbulence does, it adds sort of like a, a swirling motion to the particles. I always imagine it if, um, if a car was driving past a bunch of leaves it would it would suck them in and then spin them around. That's the, the kind of effect that you're going to get with this. Uh, so if we have a look halfway through our render. Um, let's have a play around with these values and see what kind of turbulence we get and what we like. I think 0.3 is going to give us a nice effect. That's not too bad. 
maybe 0.4 on the Y strength. There we go. So now we're getting a nice animation with our particles. So at this point we can merge our particles on top of our uh, text and glow. And we can view that in our second window and we can start to see what it is that we're creating. And we can just make the finer, cha finer changes that we need to make now. So that's starting to look good. Now to create a more realistic spark, I added a soft glow to my particles. And that gives them a nice glowy effect. And I also then went into my particle emitter and I went to color control over life. And what this means is if we click on here, we'll see a little triangle appear on the bottom. We move that all the way to the end. That means we're going to alter the color of these particles as it comes towards the end of their lifespan. Now, I want them to slowly fade and disappear. So if I just drag them to the black and drag the alpha all the way down, we'll see that over the lifespan of the particles, they start to fade away, which gives that more realistic, more realistic um, spark effect that they're just cooling down and disappearing. And it's up to you, but what I also did is I added a soft glow to my text just to give it a little bit of a glow. Oh, this will be very, very mild. And that is about the final result. So if we play that through, just let it start to render. You can see what we've achieved. If you want to put more turbulence into your particles, it's, it's easy enough. You just go into a particle emitter. If you want to change the speed of your reveal, you can adjust this polygon um, uh, keystroke here and move it out. Uh, keyframe, sorry, and move it out, and it's, it's it'll affect everything that we have attached to it. So we don't need to uh, adjust the other polygons, and it'll all all fall into line. So guys, um, I hope you've liked that one. As usual, if you want them to keep coming, just drop a like and a subscribe, and I will keep these coming. So thanks for watching.